Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, I'm going to take a look at another of these puzzles um, from dailykillersudoku.com. Uh, these are excellent logical uh, challenges. This one appeared, uh, I think it was Monday this week. Difficulty rated 8, but uh, the average time on the site is well over an hour again, which means that it, um, it's going to be quite hard. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to talk about how to enter one number, believe it or not. Um, I I imagine most of you are thinking, well, surely it can't be that hard. Well, I challenge you. Um, have a look at this puzzle, spend a few minutes on it, and see if you can enter one number. And if you can, please, in the comments, write and explain how, because I think this is an extremely difficult start to a puzzle. Um, I'm going to be frank with you. It took me 20 minutes of staring at this puzzle to enter one number. So, how do you enter one number on this puzzle? Well, there are some things that you can see immediately. We have a 789 combination for this 24 cage. Um, and it's an interesting thing going on down here with this 23 cage, because that means the other three cells in uh, this 3x3 three three block have got to add up to 22, because we know that the total of any 3x3 three three block um, in any Sudoku, Sudoku is going to have the numbers uh, 1 to 9 exactly once each, so it's going to add to 45. So I know once I've got this 23 cage here, these three are adding to 22. And 22, I'm sure most of you know, is a uh, quite a propitious total. Um, it can only be made two ways. And most importantly, both of those ways always contains a 9. Well, clearly the 9 can't go in this square. Um, so a little bit of work on the combinations, nothing terribly complicated. And this com this arrangement is forced, which means that there is a 9 in one of these two cells. This 7 cage is forced again, 1, 2, 4, still no numbers entered in. Um, and that allows us to make our first, I suppose, advanced deduction, which is this 11 cage. So now the 11 cage, obviously it can't be 2, 9, because we already have a 2 in the box. It can't be 4, 7, we already have a 4 in the box. And it can't be 5, 6, because of this trick we did on this 3x3 three three block. So this is forced to be 3, 8. And we know one of these two cells is a 9. So I know one of these two cells must therefore be a 9. Perhaps not looking terribly important, but we will come back to that at a later point. And we've now got five cells filled in this 3x3 three three block. Um, so I know that the other the other cells have got to be 5, 6, 7 and 9 in some order with the 9s being forced up there. Um, so what now? Now I think the next thing that you could look at is this row here, which it has an odd restriction about it. You can see this greater than sign between this two cell cage and this three cell cage. And that has some interesting sort of properties, because if we, the lower we make this number, the lower that's going to force this total to be. And we can quickly run out of the ability to add to make this 45. Let me show you what I mean. Let's imagine for a second that this was a 4. If this was a 4, the maximum, obviously this could be a 9, so the maximum total for these two cells would be 13. And the maximum for these three cells would therefore be 12. So we would have 4 plus 12 is 16, plus a maximum of 2 here, that's 18, plus this 16, uh, is 34 and this cell it, we can't make it big enough we can't put 11 in this cell so we know we don't know much but we know this cell is certainly greater than 4 so I'm just going to put some numbers in there just to just to remind us of that in fact this is far more restricted than that um, but the first point I want to show you involves just proving that this is a great number greater than 4 now let's look at this two cell cage which is greater than a cage containing a seven so this cell these two cells must add to at least eight now let's think about that what does that mean is it possible to make eight in two cells without using without one of the numbers being at least five 
And it's clearly not. Um, you know, we the mid, we could have a three and a five, but one of the numbers is clearly greater than four again. So if we look down here, we've got four cells containing numbers of five or greater, and we know this cage will will contribute another cell that will be five at least, and therefore we know these three cells that are not in this cage must contain numbers less than five. And of course that therefore is helpful regarding this seven. It still doesn't give us a number, mind you, but it means that this seven can only be made in one way. It can only be three and four. And that gives us a couple more deductions from there. And then, well, it turns out this three, four is, is important because we know that this cage is greater than this cage. So let's just think about what that means. So, I mean, the maximum this cage could be would be six. If it was six, it would have to be one and five. Um, if it was five, uh, it couldn't be five because all options for five have been eliminated. It couldn't be one, four, or couldn't be two, three. If it was four, again, one, three wouldn't work. It could be three because it could be one, two. And you'll immediately notice that the two options there, which are either 1 and 2 or 1 and 5, both contain a 1. That means there is no 1 in this square. And that means there is a 1 in one of these two squares. So this is the next step that I thought was important in terms of making progress. Because believe it or not, we can now investigate uh, the position of 1s in rows four and five and find something quite interesting. And in order to appreciate that, we need to go even further. We need to look at this arrangement here. So you can see that these three cells here stick out uh, from the cages contained within this three by three block. And if we add up all of these cages together, you can see the computer tells us these add to 65. And yet we know that these three well, these three by three block here will add to 45. So 65 less 45 means that this, this, this three cell combination here sums to 20. Now, what do we know about 20? Well, therefore, we can't have a one in any of these three cells. Um, so we wouldn't be able to make the other two numbers large enough to get to 20. What does this mean? Well, in turn, this means now, let's think about what happens if this cell is the one. If this is a one, these three can't be a one. We know these three can't be a one for the reasons I've just mentioned. So there would be a one in one of these three squares. And therefore there would be a one in one of these three squares. But look, we have a 19 cage here. So this can't be a one here, because that would mean we'd have to have 18 into these two cells, which is impossible. And this can't be a one, then we'd have to put a 10 there. So we can say now with certainty and somewhat bizarrely, and convolutedly, that if this is a 1, this is a 1. But even this isn't enough to get us a number. And we need to look at this arrangement going across the middle of the grid. So we have this 28 cage, the 10 cage, and the 12 cage. So we know that a complete single row of any Sudoku puzzle will add to 45. And these cells here add to 50. So I know these two cells sum to 5. So you can immediately see if, if this cell is a 1, let's just make that, make that the 1 there, this would have to be a 4. Um, and we're saying this is a 1, so this would have to be a 5. But now look, we've got an immediate problem here. Because if we eliminate 4 from these two squares, we'll have a 1, 2, pet pair in column 8. Therefore this cell will be forced to be a 5 and it will clash. So this is the final uh, piece of the jigsaw if you like which allows us after all this work to, to state with certainty this cell is not a 1. This cell must be a 1. That gives us an automatic 2 um, and then we can start to make a bit of progress see in fact that this would have to be 3 and 5 into these two squares 
because the 10 could only be made as 2, 3, 5 now, once we have a 1 and a 2 used up in the box already. And from here, you know, I'm not going to claim the rest of the puzzle is easy, but at least <laughs> it is doable. Um, and what an absurd start. So I, I have a lot of sympathy for those of you who looked at this puzzle, um, either in response to the start of the video or on Monday when, when it was released, saw it was 8 out of 10 and thought it would be very approachable and doable. Um, I certainly didn't find it so. It took a lot of effort to put even a single number in this grid. And I would love to hear from anybody out there who says, ah, oh, Simon, you've missed something simple here. Um, here's how you could have gone about this more efficiently. Um, so that's my appeal to you, the viewers. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this short edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And we'll be back soon with another edition. Please subscribe if you enjoy the content. We really appreciate that. See you soon.